Good morning readers, it's Tilly here from Tilly's Shelf and yeah, hello again. I I didn't have to come back suddenly, um, I didn't have like a surprise problem or anything. I am in fact not gone yet, um, it's the Monday morning when I was about to leave tonight and I'm recording and scheduling a video to post while I'm away, um, mostly for the benefit of my lovely mother Ros at Scally Dandling about the book. So I've picked another tag that appeared on her channel um, this year that I was tagged in. Um, I should have said I did the Brandon Sanderson tag a minute ago and I didn't say that I was tagged by my brother Alfred, not, not Ros. Um, and this one again I was tagged by Alfred and Ros said, oh she won't do it. Um, I think she said she won't do it. Um, but I'm, I'm doing it, finally, months later. Um, this one is an older tag um, and I'm not sure exactly who started it um, but it's the reading tastes tag and it's, it's quite good, it's, it's interesting. Um, and again I didn't remember to get up in between these videos and pick up some books to wave around so I'm sorry for the visually dull um, day today, um, video today. And I'm also sorry about the dressing gown. It is, it's freezing, it's really freezing this morning. Um, and it, like literally it's the first frost and I'm kind of sitting here thinking oh my poor plants are gonna die but it's fine because they're gonna die over the winter anyway because I'm not gonna be here so I don't need to worry about the fact that I didn't like cover them up in time to stop them from freezing um, but anyway that's just playing on my mind poor plants um, oh well. so without further ado let us dive into the reading tastes tag um, so question number one um, what is your favorite genre so I would say the favourite genre that I tend to return to and enjoy quite a lot over time is um, like classic books, definitely, and that has been for a very long time. But in particular, the classic books that tend to be my favourites, that I tend to return to time and again, are either romances or kind of heartwarming um, heartwarming tales. Um, so I like, a, basically I like a kind of Victorian or slightly pre-Victorian era book with a happy ending. Um, that's, that's, my, that's my jam. Um, yeah, I I will dabble in almost any genre, um, apart from the one that I'm going to mention the end, <laughs> the answer to the next question. Um, but that's probably the one that most of my favourite books would fall into that category. So, question number two is, what is the most difficult genre for you to read? And for this one, I have gone for like horror or modern crime. Like I love the kind of kind of vintage crime of 1920s, 30s, 40s, but modern crime I always feel like it makes me slightly uncomfortable and it often makes me slightly scared um, and I haven't read that much because I got put off quite early on but I feel like it, I often find it, it feels quite uncomfortable and problematic sometimes in the way that it handles women, like I can remember reading a couple of crime books um, that are quite scary um, and I don't like scary books and that also made me feel like is it re is this really getting published in the, the 2010s um, in the way that it kind of dwells on particularly violence um, around female characters and um, which I know like it's it's part of crime isn't it but it's just the way that it's handled sometimes um, so I find that quite difficult to read and I tend to find that if they are in any way realistic they do genuinely give me nightmares and that the same goes for um, modern crime TV shows like I've, I've realized that it's best if I just don't watch them um, because I might enjoy them while I'm watching them but it's not worth it in lost sleep um, which is which is a shame I don't know why I don't know why my mind uh, finds these things so difficult but I just feel like um, like yeah, you know like there's no reason to kind of intentionally traumatize your brain if you, if you know that watching something is gonna cause you some level of mental distress even if it is enjoyable and kind of cathartic to, to see it, 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 it doesn't make any sense to watch it or read it. Um, so that's my most difficult genre. What is your preferred age range? So, um, adult fiction basically, not adult as in adult, um, but you know, fiction that is written for and aimed at adult readers. Um, I'll read some young adult, but my preferred age range, the age range that I think is just genius, is preschool books. Like, they're just amazing. Like. There's so much creativity and innovation and rhyme and rhythm and the illustrations are fantastic. I could stand in bookshops for like hours on end reading preschool books and then I'm always thinking who can I give this to? One classic example of a preschool book that I definitely read as an adult because it came out in 2012 which is, okay maybe I wasn't, no yeah I would have been, I would have been at 18, I would have been an adult, um, is Have You Seen By Hat by John Classen. Um, I just had to look it up to check when it came out. Um, and I remember like finding this in Waterstones and reading it and I read it to, uh, like I, we found it and I took it to like my brother who was in the bookshop with me and got him to read it and then we ended up buying it for one of my baby cousins and it's so quotable, like the, the lines from it, we still say these days, have you 
sexy in my hat. I was like, um, stop asking so many questions. Like little, little messages from inside the book, they just stick with you. And I think that's something that's quite characteristic of preschool books is the, the way that the, the, like the wit and the story can be summarised in like one or two lines. And um, like, we're going on a bear hunt. We can't go over it. We can't go under it. Um, just like, they're lines that really stick in your mind. And yeah, so I think it's a, it's a brilliant age range um, to, to read some of. Like, I, I'm, I'm not going to have kids yet, but I can't wait to have kids to be able to read preschool books to them, like without feeling a bit weird about it. So the next question is, are you a character, let me get the wording right. Are you a character driven or a plot driven reader? And I have a cop out answer to this, which is both. Um, I was trying to think, I can't really think of many books that I think are good that don't have both. I can definitely think of books that I enjoy that have character plot and really bad writing. That's definitely a possibility. Or, but yeah, but I think character and plot, they're kind of like, there's got to be at least some plot there and there's got to be at least some character there for me to enjoy the book. Maybe that's, maybe that's sad. Um, but that, yeah, I feel like I really, really need both. Um, and I was thinking like maybe Christie's are really, really plot driven, 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 but they actually rely on having really fantastic characters that may be like stock characters, but they're still um, created really well for the world of that book. So they def you definitely couldn't say that they don't have character in them. Maybe I just misunderstand this, but yeah, I say both. Um, chap uh, chapter five, question five, do you have a preferred perspective? Um, so I didn't know that this was what this was called, um, but my brother, when he was answering this question, Alfred, he said third person limited, as in not like an omniscient narrator, but somebody who's like, that it's spoken in the third, per third person, but you kind of see from inside that person's head. Um, I think that is definitely my preferred form. It's the form that I feel most comfortable reading. It's the form that if I was writing, I would write in that form. Um, I am writing this month, or I was writing in November. Um, and that's the form I choose because it's just the most natural form and it's, I feel like it's the most easily comprehensible. Um, and I always thought that third person, this third person perspective was like the only proper perspective. And I can remember the first time I went to read Jane Eyre, I must've been about 13 and the, oh, it was 2008 or 2007 when the, uh, the series came out. There's a three part series that was on the BBC and I watched the first part and then I went to read the book straight away because I thought this is this is a brilliant you know I'm, I'm loving this I've got to read it um so I went straight to the bookshelf picked up picked up Jane Eyre and started reading the first page and I was like it's in the first person Ugh, that's not a proper book um but yeah I persevered and obviously I really really love Jane Eyre um but yeah I don't know whether it would be nice if it was in the third person I mean it works really well for that book um and that's the thing like it depends what the book is what works for it but um yeah, that was that was just my reaction to Jane Eyre being in the first person, um, because I do prefer third. Um, preferred tense, definitely past tense. Um, like not to get too specific. Um, when I pick up a book that's present tense, particularly a book that's present tense first person, I just like I really really hate it. I really just don't want to read it. It it just upsets me. Um, and that's really weird because one of my favourite like young adult series that I do return to quite frequently is The Hunger Games and that's written first person present tense so I should hate it and I do kind of hate the writing but I love the I love the plot um, so I guess that's a plot but no it's got characterisation as well this is the thing you can't you can't have one without the other um, so yeah but I definitely prefer past tense um, question number seven do you like series or standalone books best standalone definitely I um I never really want to commit to a series. I always feel a bit bad because it's like I might start it and never finish it. And that has happened quite a few times for me um, so far. And I, I always feel guilty about that book in a series that I haven't read. Like I haven't finished The Mirror and the Light. I haven't read um, the next book of Dust book. And it just weighs on my mind that I've not read these books. So if I only read standalone books, I don't acquire any more of that sense of guilt, I guess. Um, do you prefer long or short books? Or which would you rather, long or short books? Medium, uh, because sometimes I feel like if I read a lot of short books, I'm kind of cheating, um, but long books can be slightly daunting um, and very awkward to carry around. Um, what, which format do you like best? Um, I like a paperback, 
Um, I like a nice functional paperback, but I prefer it to be secondhand and I prefer it to be a little bit battered before I get it because I like kind of beating my books up, like not punching them, um, but I do like, please don't hate me, I like to put them down like open um, on a hard surface, like when I'm reading it, if I need to just get a cup of tea, I'll just put it down. Because I don't like bending the pages, because that's obviously wrong, like you know that that's wrong. But if you just put it face down, and then you can get your cup of tea or whatever, and then pick it straight back up and start reading it again, without losing your page. Because um, I always forget bookmarks and stuff. So that's my preferred, because if it's a new book, then I don't like to do that, because I feel like I'm damaging it. But if I've got it second hand, it's like, well, somebody else damaged it before me, so it's fine. Um, and then the final question is what are you currently reading and I am currently reading um, Jude the Obscure by Thomas Hardy and to be honest I've like my original goal with this book was to finish it within October for Victober and now I kind of feel like I'll be lucky to finish it within 2020 um, because I've still got five hours left on the audiobook and I'm going at about 10 minutes a week or something um, it's quite depressing um, but maybe maybe I'll get to the end of it I've got a flight um, tonight like I mentioned so um, Maybe I'll just kind of like doze on the flight um, in the middle of the night, listen to Do the Obscure and get it out of the way that way. Um, so yeah, thank you very much to Alfred for tagging me in this one. Um, and I hope you're all doing well at this point, which must be like a month on from when I left. Um, and yeah, I will see you soon. Take care.